Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland, so welcome to my channel. And I'm in Newington Green, uh, London, and behind me you can see the celebrated uh, Unitarian uh, Chapel. They usually call it a chapel rather than a church. So Unitarian is a type of uh, Christian of the Protestant denomination, um, believing in, in, the, in really the unity of God, not believing in the Holy Trinity. I don't know too much about their dogma on that issue. But um, so they uh, were regarded as dissenters from, well, the 16th century until the early 20th century. They would often have been called dissenters um, because they were Protestants who dissented from the Church of England. They're Protestants outside the Church of England. Sometimes they call them non-conformists because they didn't conform to the Church of England. There are various other dissenting churches, the Baptist Church, the Congregations Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Religious Society of Friends, better known as Quakers, Moravians, um, and so forth. Um, so uh, Newington Green is now well within Greater London. Um, however, until about 1880, uh, this was considered a village several miles from London. And you go back to when the, 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 the descendants originally um, foregathered here, it was very much deep um, in, in Arcadia. So um, the first uh, chapel was built here in 1709, if memory serves, though there had been a dissenting community which dwelt here for at least a half a century prior to that. Um, and they had been discriminated against by law, by the church as by law established, remembering until the 20th century, certainly in most countries, that uh, uh, religious affairs were not a private matter and it absolutely was the government's business what you believed and how you worshipped. And if you did not belong to the, uh, to the national religion, you did not belong to the nation fully and you were not going to have the same employment opportunities and rights as others who were conformists. Uh, so th this is carried on here. They weren't as severely persecuted as the Roman Catholic minority uh, in this country um, at all. Um, anyway, so being a religious dissenter often led to people being political dissenters because um, there was the establishment, the monarchy, and the Church of England, and the two great universities, the army, the navy, the law courts, and so on, various professions, the, uh, the, the, the livery companies, they were all interconnected and that was the establishment. So they were a bit critical of this, of, of privilege, and um, they believed in equality. And equality was regarded as uh, a quite noisome notion by the establishment at the time. It wasn't until the 20th century that equality came to be broadly accepted, at least in principle. Um, so there were a number of uh, distinguished ministers who held the pulpit here. And surely the most celebrated was Dr. Richard Price, a Welshman is here in the late uh, 18th century um, and uh, he was a um, uh, noted statistician as well but he's best known for his political radicalism and he embraced, well, endorsed, I should say, the French Revolution and the American Revolution and then um, in 1689 just, he also uh, ruminated on the Revolution of 1688 known to many as the Glorious Revolution saying that that was a, a splendiferous thing but in a way hadn't gone far enough and that the gains of it had been uh, gradually lost, that the, the um, reactions that sort of chipped away at the, the liberties that were supposed to be secured by 1688. Um, and increasingly censorship was coming in and the Napoleonic Wars came along and various acts, um, they, they broadened the definition of sedition and they closed down various organizations such as the London Corresponding Society. Um, anyway, so uh, some people re regarded him as a seditionist, but no, he was not fettered and flung into a fettered dungeon. Um, so, uh, and one of the most notable congregants of his was a certain Mary Wollstonecraft. So Mary Wollstonecraft is known as the mother of modern feminism. She's born in 1759 and she's uh, best known as the authoress of A Vindication of the Rights of Women. So I shan't uh, go through her entire biography, but uh, she came from a middle class family and they fell on hard times. She uh, was a voracious reader, academically precocious. She became a schoolmistress and a school mom, was the only white collar profession a woman could follow in those days um, because the universities were barred to women. Not many girls went to secondary school, whereas um, few boys went to secondary school. Um, and uh, you know, most boys went to primary school at least a little. Some girl, quite a few girls didn't go to primary school at all. So remember, until well into the 20th century, there were all a few illiterates in this country. Um, and she was a governess for some distinguished families, including for uh, a patrician family in Ireland. And she traveled extensively. She sailed around Norway and so on. She wrote these very um, newsy and informative epistles from all her peregrinations. Um, so she uh, had an unusual private life. Um, she fell uh, hopelessly in love with a man who's already married. 
um, and she couldn't deny herself him, but she didn't want to be a homebreaker. So she went to his wife and said, would you mind sharing your husband? And his, uh, the wife's answer was shorter than yes. Uh, but even though Mary Wollstonecraft added, yes, but what if I, I promise there'll be no physical intimacy with your husband, but no, she wasn't having it. She moved to Paris and uh, she had a child with an American chap she wasn't married to and she published a book. Later it came out that she was an unmarried mother and she did get married at some point, but not to the father of a child. And that horrified a lot of people. But uh, then she gave birth to um, uh, her daughter, um, and later became Mary Shelley. And uh, she, this, this, this uh, horrified people. Um, and she died of puerperal fever only about 10 days after her daughter's birth, birth buried in St Pancras Old Cemetery. And that's where um, uh, her daughter and uh, the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley had their assignations. And legend has it that her daughter lost her maidenhood on her mother's tomb. Though um, I would take that one with a fistful of salt. You wouldn't think it would quite put people in the amorous mood. Anyway, the original church here was pulled down and rebuilt in 1860. But until then, it, there were regular demonstrations outside here by church and king mobs. Um, conservative-minded mobs. That Richard Price is mentioning, he lived uh, right around here. I might show you his house later. And um, by, by the end of his life, he was sort of a, a grand old man of letters, and he'd acquired even the unwilling respect of his former foes. And so quite conservative-minded figures like um, uh, Pitt the Younger um, came to visit him, and he paid court to various other people who came from across the seas and oceans. But this is going back really to the 1780s. Benjamin Franklin visited him, Thomas Jefferson, Lady John Adams and his wife, the redoubtable Abigail, she visited him. Um, he was an inspiration to Tom Paine, who knew him, you know, he of the rights of man and common sense and so forth. So he was a very distinguished um, uh, character. Um, so the, the, this church now, it's, it's not afraid to take a stance on contentious political issues. You might see the Black Lives Banner there, and it was always involved in the anti-apartheid movement. It believed in um, uh, same-sex marriage, before that was fashionable, it's taken up the environmental cause and things like that. Some people think it's, it's too political and not religious enough, and um, it's just too politically radical, putting off people who'd otherwise be attracted to the Christian message. Their sign even says that the least religious church in London. But um, so uh, anyway, this is the actual green of Newington Green I'm going to go into very briefly. And there is a, a, a um, sculpture dedicated to Mary Wollstonecraft. I think it's ghastly, even though, I mean, uh, even I would agree with first wave feminism. There you can see in the distance. And then some Irish woman, Saoirse Ni Bedantunde, she had the idea of putting a bit of a fence around it that you could easily get over the fence if you wish to, to because that's meant to be emblematic of exclusion. Right, so that is um, uh, Newington Green. So I hope you found that a trifle informative. Um, so if you kindly put your hand into your purse and disburse many pennies to me on, on, on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. That's all lowercase letters. Callahan spelled C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. Toodaloo.